What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Logistical Styles coming at you with another video and today we are in the lab and we're doing a quick video talking about how the transport button works on the Rain 70 with DJ Pro. The transport button on the Rain 70 uh, by the default when you're using a program that it's designed for a Serato, it would automatically pull up a set of buttons that would allow you to start and stop the music, uh, hit sync, uh, have pitch bend to go up and down, and a couple other functions. I'm not really sure. I can't remember it right offhand. But with DJ Pro, they have changed the pad, the transport button, and made it into their neural mix pad mode. And that's where you would basically their stems. It's ba they separate the song into their drums, bass, melody, or vocal, and you're able to mute them or solo them at the touch of a button when you hit the transport button. But a lot of people have asked me about how do you get that transport functionality back. And the way you do it is you have to MIDI map the second layer of the transport button. So with the transport button right here, if you hit it one time, it makes the pads all go white. And then the bottom row is the, where you would uh, press to mute parts of the song. That's why they turned all red. And... Up top is where you can solo parts of the song, and it's bass, uh, I'm, not, I'm sorry, it's drums, bass, melody, and vocals, and same thing for the bottom. But if you want to have the transport mode to actually be, you want the transport button to get you to transport mode, you have to double tap it, and in that secondary layer, this is where you have the option to um, program it how you want to. It'll be a blank slate. On this particular deck, I've already mapped out some buttons. Well, I mapped them all out, but I'll show you how to do it on the right deck as well because you have to do it for each deck. Um, I've mapped this to be my start and stop button. I've mapped this to be my pitch up, pitch down, sync button right here. Uh, this engages sync. I think I have to map it to also be shift and disengage it, but well, that. You hit it once and it disengages. And then down here I have my cue points. So any cue points the f up to the first four would be shown down here. And I figure those are the uh, features you really need the most when you're trying to play in internal mode. If you don't have decks or if your decks go bad, you can always use uh, your transport mode like it is. But I'll show you how to get it set up. And also I want to, like I said before, I want to map this um, parameter button to be instant instrumental and then this one to be instant acapella so you have to go into the uh, software to do this if you go into the uh, mapping mode MIDI menu up top and then go to configure rain 70 MIDI and this pulls up the MIDI window and here you can see uh, what configurations there are available Right now, mine says Rain 70 Edit 1 because I just previously edited it as I was testing out. But then um, you'll see there's Rain 70 built in. That's the default one that comes with DJ Pro. And I'm not sure if they changed it uh, with the 5.2 update. I believe they did because I don't remember the mapping being this way for uh, the stems. Uh, so. You have these options. You can set up or save different configurations depending on how you like to work in DJ. So I'm going to keep here on Rain 70 Edit 1 because that's the most recent edit that I've done. I probably need to actually edit those configurations. No. Okay, so this is what they are. You, here you could actually probably delete them if you needed to. Like what well, options? Yeah, duplicate. Nope. How about this one? Yeah. So the one that says Rain 70, that's the built in one. You can't delete it, but you can delete the ones that you created. Now, this Rain 70 edit, this is the one that I created um, before the uh, recent update. So if I wanted to revert back to that, in fact, let me go back and see. Let's see what that looks like. Rain 70 edit done and the switch so I think 
I pretty much kept them the same. Oh, no, I had to eject. I put an eject button, a play, pause, pitch, bend, up, down, and a sync button. And then two cue points. So I'm not, I'm, I don't really like that, actually, to be honest. So I'm going to delete that configuration. Option delete. Yes. So now there's the built-in one and there's this one, Rain 70 Edit 1. So we'll say done. I'm going to switch you to Edit 1. And we, you can see how I have it set up. Okay. So on this deck, which is deck one, I have the first button top left of the top row left button. I have that set to play pause. I don't really feel like I needed an eject button. Um, then the pitch bend up down are the two middle buttons and the sync button is the top right button. Uh, cue pad so lower cue pads are jump to one two three and four and I think that is the way I want it to be to be quite honest so if I go into transport mode you'll see that cue points one and two are there because this song only has two cue points if I were to add three four cue point then when I go back there you'll see those cue points are oh they're lit up so in hot cue mode, you see I have four cue points set up. If I double tap the transport button, that brings me into my MIDI mapped, my custom transport. And my bottom row are the first four cue points of, that, uh, of this track. Uh, the first button up here on top row, this is a start and stop button. Middle two are pitch bend down, pitch bend up, and the right button is turning sync on or turning sync off. The only thing is when you turn sync off, it doesn't reset to the original uh, tempo. It just unlocks the sync. It just unsyncs it, which is uh, cool. I can probably find a way to mini map that. But let's also take time to map these parameter buttons. So if I hit parameter uh, on the software, it jumps up to where the parameter Right now I'm doing left, and I want to make this be instant instrumental. So i got to scroll all the way down to the effects. Um, let's see. Let's see. It's down here. Normix. Instrumental. Solo. Neural mix solo, two channel. So the different channels that they talk about in the uh, mapping, the different channels are drums, bass, melody, and um, vocals. If you choose to only have two channels, then it's just going to be instrumental acapella. If you do three channels, then you can make it be drums. Or, I mean, you have a choice. You can make it be drums and melody and vocal or drums and bass and melody, whatever. Those are the different channels. So that's how it, it's, that's what the terminology is. So let's go back here. I'm going to make it, I'm choosing under the two channel that make this the instrumental button. And then for the other parameter button, I'm going to make this be two channel acapella. So let's go and work with deck number two because deck number two, I have not programmed anything on it yet. So we'll just go do it through and do the same thing. This will be two channel. So now we should be good to go. I should have all my uh, internal mapping set for me, be, for me to be able to play without the, uh, the decks. Now, regular press of transport button gives you your uh, neural mix pad, and that allows you to, you know, mute in solo sounds. A secondary tap will bring you into what I just programmed now, which is my uh, internal mode. Um, yeah, my standalone mode but what I need to do is switch the deck to internal mode 
So you go up here. Right now I'm in wireless mode because I have face hooked up. But we're going to switch it to internal. And now, if you look at my turntables, you'll see that this is white and it's flashing because that is the play pause button. Then these are the cue points. Those are the cue points right there. And um, it turns sync on, turns sync off. So let me show you how this works. So you got the track playing right now. I'm able to jump between cue points. And I'm gonna stop. It even has a little turntable drag when it stops. I think that's a setting you can do. And you can choose it how it drags or whatever when you hit stop. But I can pitch down, I can pitch up, I can, like I said, hit sync with this one right here. Um, if I want to, I can just hit the parameter button, and now I've got an instant instrumental. If I want to hit this button right here, i got an instant acapella. Bring the beat back. All internal not even having to use the decks and of course you have your regular features you have your regular functions of the mixer you can scroll through your library with both knobs up here left and right um, it's a very functional transport mode I don't really see a need for an eject button because you're just going to be scrolling loading and scrolling and loading um, but you can start stop you can change your pitch Maybe I might try to find a button that will allow you to actually not just do a pitch bend, but a, a tempo change, you know, change the actual pitch and hold it into whatever up or down that you set it to. But that's a really, um, really real, what I wanted to cover in this is just showing you how functional you can make this, even though they did remove the uh, transport buttons. I wish they didn't. And if they did do it, I wish they would have just, you know, uh, if they wanted to make the stems front and center, they could have just done that and then put the transport like I did here. But maybe they just wanted you to have your, their own custom mapping. Either way, this is a way to get around that problem. You can set your own. You don't have to do what I did. You can make your own mapping. Just go through the menu and look at all the different actions that you can assign to a button in the MIDI uh, menu. So hopefully this was a little bit informative. And... Um, until next time, don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.